What's good, you guys? It's Boomer and Jer watching Bali Star. Today, today, we're just getting into why Future and Metro Boomin's new album has Drake scared. Now, I'm saying that in this tone because now, disclaimer. I'm hearing this might not even be real, but Drake dropped his diss. But again, it might not be real. They're saying it's possibly AI. But I heard it. Full thing. Shit got me pissed off like I'm beefing with him. Bro, all I can say is, if this is AI generated, they did such a phenomenal job for Drake that if Drake were to drop his actual diss track, it better top the one I just heard right now. It better fucking top it. Because this shit, bro, this shit hit deep. Cut deep. Dang, remind me of the 90s, man, early thousands. The way I just heard that track, I was like, oh my, dropping names, all that. I was like, bro, I don't think this is Drake. But then I heard the end of it, I was like, this is Drake. This is Drake. Dude, I, uh, bro. If it's AI, phenomenal, outstanding job. If it's Drake, oh my god. Oh my god. <sighs> well, I just wanted to say that through, you know, to, to at the beginning of the video. So that way, it's out there, you know what I'm saying? You get my reaction to this possible... AI generate, that's what they're saying, Drake this track. Or real Drake this track. You know, it's up to you to decide. Or it'll possibly come out in due time after this video. But nonetheless, let's get straight in, into the video. Let's go. Brazy, brazy times we're in. As Future and Metro Boomin just released their second collab album, We Still Don't Trust You. It's clear that this duo are still the diabolical minds that are fueling all the competition in rap music right now, but with this record, from its insane performances from Future and Metro themselves, to the shocking new alliances they have formed to put even more pressure on Drake, it's safe to say that this duo just made the hip-hop world an even crazier place than it has already been over the past couple of weeks. So when it comes to Future and Metro Boomin's second full-length studio album together, Considering how their first album, We Don't Trust You, lit the rap world on fire in a way that any body of work hasn't in years. The expectations were already high for this album, but beyond just the sheer quality people wanted from this record, many have also expected Future and Metro to continue waging war on their first album's main target, Drake. And when it comes to both of these aspects, while Future and Metro picked things right back up from where we left them just a few weeks ago, they went about everything on this record in a way that nobody could have expected. We Still Don't Trust You isn't an album that just naturally progresses on everything that its predecessor did, but it expands on the very scope of everything everything that Future and Metro Boomin have been trying to show the world in its entirety. This is immediately seen as the album features 25 tracks that run for almost an hour and a half, but while listening to most projects at this length seems like a sentence that will make you suffer through some of the worst musical experiences possible, Metro and Wait, Future what? Crap run for almost an hour and a half, but while listening to most projects at this length seems like a sentence that will make you suffer through some of the worst musical experiences possible, Metro and Future crafted these 25 tracks into a double album where the first 19 songs represent the core project and the final seven stand as a disc of their own. Now between these two sides of the record, while they are connected through the performances from Future and Metro, they are drastically different stylistically and this is immediately reflected as soon as you press play on the self-titled intro track. 
where on We Don't Trust You, the intro track immediately showed the world that Future and Metro Boomin are taking a stance against a rival of theirs who we later find out is Drake as Future's verse progresses and unveils more personal details. We Still Don't Trust You does not need to jump right into beating on Drake as we already know where he stands with Future and Metro and overall, while this does leave you sitting on the edge of your seat to see just how Drake is going to get blasted on this record. It also allows Future and Metro to just shine as artists and show that even when they are not directly engaging in beat, they can still make just as captivating music as ever. Now between the lack of any real disses in the intro and the more up-tempo melody, we see that the sonic world of We Still Don't Trust You is going to be drastically different than what we just saw a few weeks ago and throughout the album's first half. This sentiment only becomes more apparent. Future and Metro Boomin do not stir up much controversy on the front half of this album, and through Metro's softer production and Future's performances which tap in more to his melodic side than his actual rapping ability, we see this duo doing something completely different which definitely helps this album stand on its own. Now with that said, I don't think this melodic driven sound and atmosphere works out as well for the duo as the grittier sound on the first album did as both Future and Metro are not as dynamic musically in this regard. And in addition, in an album that has been built around disses, this lighter tone Crazy can how that place song we know what everyone is for the medieval times, like I forgot what that song was. I wasn't really a big fan of that song, but it's crazy how that just came out and then this happens, bro. It's been out like for like two years now, two years ago, that song came out. It was just crazy, man. Time flies. I thought I just heard it on the radio, like for the first time just the other day. Expecting and what Future and Metro are eventually going to do on this project. Now still, even though the aggression and hostility is much more tamed on the first half of this project, it does allow Future and Metro to attack Drake in much more nuanced ways, such as with the entirety of the song This Sunday, which was actually the reference track Drake used for his song on Views Feel No Waves. Now while Future and Metro hold their punches on the first half of this album outside of moments like these, that doesn't mean they are not still heavily engaged in their chess match against Drake as this time. They use such artists as The Weeknd, who appears on this album not once, not twice, but three times, and with his feature on the track all to myself, he throws some pretty massive shots Drake's way. Now, during The Weeknd's feature here, he says, They could never diss my brother's baby when they got leaks in the operation. I thank God that I never signed my life away. Which is insane for The Weeknd to say, as he is literally rejoicing over the fact that he didn't end up signing to Drake in the early 2010s, and now, as we have seen how every other artist has turned out who has joined Drake's OVO sound record label, I think it's pretty clear that if The Weeknd joined this label that's known for destroying artist careers before they can even really start, we would definitely not see him in the place he is in today. Now, right alongside disses like this, one of the best parts of this album is that as the track list progresses, the production gets consistently darker, and so do Future's performances, and this really puts listeners on edge as it leaves you waiting for the next moment that Future and Metro decide to change everything in this feud and put even more pressure on Drake to respond, and in this regard, this happens in the craziest way possible on the first half of the album's outro track, Red Leather, as the record features none other than the guy who was supposed to be Drake's right-hand man in this beef, J. Cole. Now, J. Cole has really had one of the craziest weeks of his entire career, as after dissing Kendrick Lamar on his song, Seven Minute Drill, and then apologizing just a few days later, he has now switched teams in this feud as he is rapping alongside Drake's biggest rivals and beyond how diabolical of a move this is from Future and Metro Boomin. On the verse itself, it seems like Cole could have addressed all of the controversy surrounding his recent forfeit to Kendrick Lamar. Now over a gloomy instrumental, we see a version of J. Cole that we have not seen in years as he's not bragging or saying he's the best rapper in the world, but instead is speaking to us from a much more somber place where he's much more introspective and as we see Cole loosely navigate his thoughts, he says, My energy was never on some toughest stuff. I was just a conscious rapper. Which could seemingly be attempting to justify Cole's motives and how he maybe like, got he lost in all of the buzz around his feud with Kendrick and while I think like, Cole will after seven minute drill or something need to go into more depth about what caused him to truly apologize to Kendrick in future music releases to earn respect back from a lot of people. This was about as enjoyable as a verse you could get from him at this point, but beyond what this represents for Cole himself, the fact that Future and Metro Boom were able to get the guy who Drake just did an entire tour with on this album has just given them another point against Drake as it shows just how diabolically of a level they are operating on in this beat. 
Now, while the first half of this album does all of this, what really defines this project as a whole and will dictate what happens in this feud going forward is what goes down on the second half of the project as Future and Metric don't just make even more insane moves that back Drake into a corner. But beyond this, instead of letting somebody like Kendrick Lamar fight Drake in the Battle of the Big Three, Future decides to handle it himself as he delivers one of the most inspired and hungry performances of his entire career. As soon as you hear the intro track on this half, number one, which features Noriega talking about how Future turns the big three into a fantastic four, and Future may even be number one out of him, Kendrick, Drake, and Colt. We are thrown into an atmosphere that we have never seen from Future before, as he isn't just trying to make the craziest bet. I didn't hear a lot of the album. But what? Angers, but he is trying to show that he is one of the best rappers of our time firsthand. Between the insane performances from Future, where he's more commanding, lyrically Indeed, sharp, and dynamic, to the production, which isn't just handled by Metro, but also some of Future's other most iconic collaborators, including Southside, Wheezy, and Honorable Cena, we truly see Future rapping like he has a fire lit under him here as he delivers one of the best runs of tracks in his entire track career, is and that is really saying a lot. Now, Future's performances in this section show us that he is ready for battle like we have never seen before, and he definitely gets some good jabs in on Drake, but making things even crazier. We see two features throughout these seven songs, with one from Lil Baby, which is definitely solid. But more importantly, we get a verse from none other than ASAP Rocky on the song Show of Hands, and after Drake has too. continually thrown subliminals at Rocky that, and but, Rihanna, yeah. as he's just mad that he lost saw out on bars, the girl in the Rocky had the perfect opportunity to scorch Drake here, and he definitely did this as he threw out some shots that are definitely going to sting for a while. Whether Rocky is alluding to the fact that he has been ready to diss Drake since the first album Future and Metro did, to taunting Drake over the fact that he stole the girl of his dreams and that his latest album For All the Dogs just came and went. Rocky really annihilates Drake with one of his most sinister performances to date, and between Future giving some of his best rapping, J. Cole switching sides, The Weeknd throwing major shots, and ASAP Rocky trying to humiliate Drake and expose his bitterness, Future and Metro Boomin have really managed to make things even crazier with We Still Don't Trust You in ways that are going to have some major effects on the rap world going forward. After apologizing to Kendrick and then literally switching sides, Drake has to have added J. Cole to his list of targets, and now... He's going to have to directly respond to ASAP Rocky is right behind Future and Kendrick. Nobody's come harder at him at this point, so with what seems like the entire music industry against him and still no response, Drake's really going to have to deliver an all-time great diss to shake off all of his adversaries, and while some people may think that Drake is being ganged up on, this really isn't the case, as he has been throwing shots at nearly all these artists for years on his recent projects, so at this point, Drake's really only being held accountable for all the jabs he's used to sell his albums, and in the near future, we will finally find out if he's truly about all the things he says. So overall, Future and Metro Boomin have definitely succeeded with this album as they made their feud with Drake even more insane on all fronts, and while We Still Don't Trust You is not as consistent as its predecessor, with its first half being super entertaining and its second featuring one of the best runs of Future tracks in his entire career. I would say that this record is more than a welcome addition to the series and both of their catalogs. So let me know, how do you feel about We Still Don't Trust You and what do you think is next to come out of this beef? I can't wait to hear what you have to say and if you want to see my ranking of Well again, if that Drake diss track is real, oh my god, the ante has just been upped, man. It's just been upped. Y'all let me know your thoughts about down in the comment section down below. Y'all know it's Boomer and you're watching. Bali Star. Make sure to leave a like, support the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new so that we can join up with the bomb squad. You did. Catch y'all in the next one. 100. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.